All right, take your Bible and turn with me to the Gospel of John this morning, the 16th chapter. John, the 16th chapter. As I said last week, uh, preaching through uh, a gospel uh, presents opportunity uh, and problem. Uh, again, it uh, brings you to some texts that are uh, uncomfortable that you, if you've been preaching through it, you can't very well skip. Uh, or everybody will notice and figure you're a chicken, uh, you know, and so, uh, and uh, this passage in chapter 16, uh, again, we are still, uh, the chapter mark makes you may think that, uh, that something new is happening, but we are still uh, on the road from the upper room to Gethsemane, uh, and Jesus is talking uh, to, his, uh, to his disciples and giving them uh, some important, uh, I guess you'd say parting directions, parting uh, words, instructions uh, that they were going to need. And so uh, last week, and then he amplifies it again, uh, this week he deals with the issue uh, of persecution. And they were certainly, uh, those disciples were certainly about to face uh, a great deal of persecution. We all know uh, about the persecution of the early church uh, and how uh, that looked and uh, the, uh, the, the various methods uh, and ways of uh, persecution from, uh, from being, uh, many of them being ostracized from their own families, uh, to being unable to uh, conduct business, uh, to being killed uh, for their faith. And as uh, Jesus is going to uh, address them here, and he's going to, uh, he's going to, give them uh, this instruction about persecution and I've, uh, I've got to cover uh, to cover the text faithfully I've got to cover some of this issue uh, about persecution but uh, I, I want to tell you uh, that uh, we're headed uh, in this passage there's a uh, you ever see one of those hamsters running on a wheel or whatever uh, there is a carrot uh, at the end uh, of this passage it uh, starts out uh, talking about persecution but uh, there is a, uh, a, a promise uh, out at the end uh, of, uh, of this passage that uh, Jesus puts before him. Uh, and what we're going to see and uh, what we know, I don't know that we necessarily see it so much uh, in Scripture, but Scripture uh, complements, and we know this from uh, from history, uh, the real battle that the early church faced uh, is, is in many ways similar, uh, I think, to the battle uh, that we still face today. Uh, the church battle, uh, the persecution of the church largely uh, didn't come uh, from the pagans. Uh, the persecution largely came uh, from religion itself. Uh, religion itself uh, was one of the major uh, problems or persecutors uh, of the early church. And, uh, and I think that's still uh, the case that, uh, that we have today. And the fact is, here's what it boils down to. Uh, just as, again, today, uh, the world has no problem with religion. Uh, the world has no problem with religious people. Uh, in fact, I think uh, they like religion. Uh, in fact, I think they like religious people. Uh, they need us. Uh, we do a lot of things for them. We uh, Religious people have, uh, have orphanages and hospitals and pass out food. We uh, Just to let you know, uh, you have been part of over the last uh, month a program uh, that the government set up uh, and uh, our churches here in this area uh, have distributed uh, four tractor trailer loads of food, almost uh, 160,000 pounds uh, of food that went out uh, into the, the community, into uh, needy hands. And uh, not only did it help the uh, people who got the food, but they were buying the food from our farmers, and, and, and God blessed the farmers, keeping them uh, working. And so the world doesn't have any problem. In fact, uh, the actual... Uh, program from uh, the USDA said that uh, something to the effect of using uh, faith-based groups to distribute the food. The world doesn't mind religion. 
The world doesn't mind religious people. The problem is, uh, if you're a child of God, you have been called to be more than religious. You have been called to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Now, that's where the divide comes. You can be religious. The world has no issue uh, with religion. They have uh, government grant programs and things to, to give money to help uh, churches do religious things. But the problem is, is when we try uh, and, and we uh, represent uh, Jesus Christ as the only way uh, of salvation. That's where uh, the rub comes. That's where uh, persecution comes in. That's where uh, disagreement uh, comes in. When you uh, begin to preach that uh, all men uh, must come to the Father through the Son, uh, then you, you've moved in their mind from religion uh, to medicine. Uh, and the world has a, uh, an issue uh, with that. So this morning, as we look at the text, I want you to uh, keep that concept uh, in mind because that's really, I think, what Jesus is uh, preparing his followers for uh, is, <coughs> again, this idea. Uh, and, and uh, you know, that, that's something that's difficult for us uh, to really uh, to understand and to deal with. It's, you know, we expect uh, the guy that runs the beer joint to maybe, you know, be opposed to the church, but when religion uh, is against Christianity, that's, uh, that, that's where uh, we, we struggle, uh, you know, and, and where we uh, have, uh, you know, have a, a, an issue uh, in our church. And so I want you to see uh, several things here uh, as Jesus in, in his final moments here uh, as, a, as a free man uh, addresses his followers uh, about uh, this issue. And, and he tells them beginning in verse 1 uh, and again it refers back to chapter marks uh, kind of unfortunate because it's still uh, flowing out of uh, everything that he said. He says I've told you these things uh, to keep you from being uh, offended uh, or to keep you from stumbling or to keep you from uh, falling away. Uh, the Greek word that is used there uh, is the word where we get uh, our English word scandalized I don't want you to be scandalized. I don't want you to, uh, to uh, be all upset and, uh, and, and, and torn apart uh, over this issue. And so uh, what we have here uh, to begin with then is the message affirmed. Jesus says, I've told you these things. Uh, I've told you about persecution. I've told you you were going to be aided. I've told you these things. I've told you let not your heart be troubled. I've told you about the Holy Spirit. Spirit. I've told you about the Comforter. I've told you all those things uh, that are in chapter 15. I've told you I love you. I've told you the world hates you. And I've told you all those things to keep you from being offended or to keep you uh, from stumbling. Uh, the word offended in our language today has a little bit different, uh, you know, different uh, kind of uh, picture for us. Offended, uh, you know, is kind of like if you know somebody says to you that dress is ugly. Uh, you know, that's what we think of as offended, but uh, stumble uh, or be discouraged or uh, to uh, be diverted, to trip uh, is the idea. So Jesus says to us, he says, I don't want you to, uh, to stumble while you follow me. I don't want you to trip. I don't want you to be uh, upset uh, while you follow me because uh, we, 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 we're going to face uh, persecution. If you, uh, uh, again, you can go in uh, into your workplace, you can go into your community, and, and you can talk about religion. Uh, you can talk about the church. You can talk about uh, all kinds of things. But the moment uh, that you come uh, and begin to preach, the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ and Him crucified, one way uh, of salvation, then you're going to come against uh, persecution. You're, you're going to come against resistance. You're going to come against uh, those who, uh, who don't want to hear uh, that message. And, and, and there's something, I think, in our minds that that does tend to cause us, you know, you would think, you know, uh, you know a lot of you, uh, probably, you know, probably all of us said, uh, if you think back to that day that you got saved. 
uh, that moment that you first found Jesus Christ and, and you began to follow him, you were like, hey, man, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Yeah, why? Yeah, I, you know, everybody ought to try this. And you were just excited uh, about finding Jesus Christ. You know, especially maybe if you were somebody who kind of grew up outside of the church and had never really heard about Christ and never really heard much about it and it was completely new to you. You were like, wow, man, this is the most amazing thing. You know, I can't wait to, you know, I'll go tell my friends. They'll all want to accept Jesus. Yeah, that was probably the mindset you had when you first got saved. I go, I go tell my coworkers, and we'll all come to church next week and sit in a little group. You know, they'll all want to know Jesus when I tell them about it. And you went out and you started telling people about Jesus. And guess what? You found out everybody wasn't as excited as you, didn't you? You know, you found out. You know, you found out everybody doesn't want to hear about Jesus. Everybody doesn't want to hear that there's only one way to salvation. You know, and, and, and you know, it, 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 it can be a real hindrance. It can be a real stumbling block for, uh, in particular, a, a, a new believer. As they go out, and again, they're, you know, they're all on fire, and, you know, and, and in little ways. We go, and you go home and you tell family and friends, guess what happened? I got saved. Uh, Jesus lives in me. And they'll look at you, and they'll, you know, they'll, they'll, some of you probably had this happen. They'll say something, you'll get over it. You know, yeah, I've heard that before. You know those, y'all know those comments, right? Y'all have heard those things. You know, and Jesus is saying this. He said, I don't want you to stumble. I want you to know that it's out there. And many of you here today, I, I know you've already experienced it. You're aware of that. You know uh, that, that this world, again, you talk about church. You can invite them to, to supper. You can invite them to the free spaghetti. You can invite them, you know, you can invite them to church even. And they'll come and they'll sing. They might even put some money in the offering plate. But when you tell them that what we believe is that Jesus Christ, we believe we're the only ones who got it right. That's basically what you're saying. We believe that Jesus Christ is the only, you know, man, they'll put on brakes. They'll look like dogs trying. You ever take a dog to the vet? And they putting it in reverse, you know. That's, you, know, you start talking about Jesus as the only way of salvation, and that's what it looks like. And they look like, you know, uh, how do dog knows that building is the vet? But they'll, you know, they'll start backpedaling. Huh? You, know, you, ever, you, ever, you know, you're dragging that dog in by the leash, and he, you know, all four wheels. He, you know, that's the way people will respond to the news of Jesus Christ. And most of us, we, we think, wow, I, they, they're just going to come running. I'm just going to sit on my front porch with a big sign that says, everybody come here and hear about Jesus. And they're going to line up. And I, you know, that's what we think is going to happen. Jesus says, don't be offended. I'm telling you these things because the religious of the world are going to fight you. What some of you have probably learned, and if you haven't, you will if you try to talk much about Jesus Christ, is you know what? You'll find out that the, the, the drunk, the drug addict, the, 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 what we might consider you know, the furthest from God are the ones who often are the ones who are excited to hear about the news of Jesus Christ. It's good people, religious people, who don't want to hear about Jesus. They want to be good on their own. And so Jesus says, don't be offended. Don't stumble over this truth. Don't stumble over the reality that you're going to be hated. Don't stumble over the reality. Don't stumble over the truth that people at work are going to talk about you. Don't stumble. Uh, don't allow that to undermine your faith. Don't allow that uh, to, uh, to cool your enthusiasm uh, for Jesus Christ. Just because, matter of fact, I would say to you uh, that based on what Jesus just said is that when you see that happening, you ought to, it ought to, instead of discouraging you and being a stumbling block, it ought to add fuel to the fire and tell you, hey, I must be on the right path. I must be doing something right 
because the, ch the world is rejecting my message. They rejected the messenger. Now they're rejecting the message. And Jesus says, don't be offended. Don't stumble by that. But I, I believe what Jesus is saying, and we're going to see this very clearly at the end of this passage, is Jesus is saying we should be encouraged when we see the world rejecting what we're saying. Because then we know we've got the right message. Listen, when, when, when you stand up and preach or teach and everybody loves it, you know, I never have quite figured out how, how to take it when, when after church service when somebody comes out and they says, I really enjoyed that. And I'm like, well, I didn't do it right. You know, you know I, I didn't do it right if you enjoyed it. You know, uh, it, it, you know I don't know about you, but I'm kind of uh, of the mindset that the worse the medicine tastes, the better it is. You know, y'all ever notice that? You know, uh, uh, some of the worst, med best medicine I ever had was nasty. You know, I, you know, when it tastes too good, I figure that's too much. That's like those, uh, y'all remember, we used to buy them for candy. Honest oh, truth. You know, oh, I can't think, I believe they were Hall Ludens. Them, them little cherry cough drops. Man, them things was good. You know, you cough them all. You, know, you didn't, didn't do diddly for a cough, but man, they was good. You know, eat a whole box in no time. You know, listen, you know, I, 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 you know, I never have figured out how to accept that. That was a good message, preacher. Yeah, you know, you know, I, 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 I kind of got the mindset you ought to come out mad at me. That, if I done it right, you probably ought to be mad. You know, listen, Jesus says don't be offended. Don't be shocked. Don't be surprised when the world hates your message. You see, the message that it, it is affirmed to us, and uh, we have to be cautious because persecution can cause a believer's faith to weaken and, and, and they question and doubt. And, and, and so Jesus says, no, persecution ought to let us know we're on the right path. And so he says, persecution. He says, I'm telling you this so you won't stumble. And then he tells us here, not only the, the, the message affirmed, but, but the methods. Look what he says. He talks about two things. And there's a lot of ways. You know, there's a lot of ways to persecute people, uh, if you think about it. You know, if you go back in New Testament history, uh, the, the, the Romans really... You know, they outdid themselves sometimes on ways of persecuting Christians. There's a, you know, a, a lot of ways uh, to go about persecuting. But, but Jesus is going to list two here. Uh, and, and, and again, certainly there's more. Uh, but I think these two really uh, kind of sum up uh, where the, the, they kind of two broad categories. Look what he, he says about them. First of all, he says they'll put you out of the temple, the synagogue. They, they'll put you out of the synagogue, excommunication. And, uh, you know, that, that he says they, they, they'll kick you out uh, uh, of the church. They, they, they'll put you out uh, of the synagogue. And listen, uh, th this was something uh, that was practiced again. The, the Jewish synagogue, that was kind of like a, a family, you know, business, family affair. And, and you know, uh, Melissa come home and say, I got saved today. I'm following Jesus. And they'd say, well, we're going to put you out of the temple. You won't be able to worship with your family anymore. You won't be able to go to church with your family. And the whole idea was to cause that person to go back and say, oh, well, wait a minute. If I, then I, 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 never mind. I, I'm going to back up uh, on my testimony. I'm, I, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to say I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. You know, we hear about, you know, that kind of practice in, in, in the Muslim world today. Jesus says, listen, it, and it happened in the, in the, in the early church. They, they would excommunicate them from the synagogue. They would kick them out. They wouldn't do business in their shops. They wouldn't allow them to come in and do business in their shops. You wouldn't be allowed to be around your family. And, 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 I mean, this was a, a serious thing. We're not just talking about, you know, around here, if somebody says, we're going to kick you out of church, you know, it, honestly, it's, you know, truthfully, it's not that big a deal because there's 2,000 more to choose from. You know, it's not like, you know, it, it, you know it's not like we're the only show in town. You know, and, and so, you know, but for them, it was a bit, the church was the center uh, of, of everything. The synagogue. And if you got kicked out of the synagogue, you weren't going to the synagogue, you were unclean. You were, you know, you were an outcast. You again, you couldn't go to family gatherings. You couldn't go 
uh, do business. They wouldn't do business with you. If you got sick, they wouldn't take care of you. I mean, this was a serious thing. And, and it was all about trying to get you uh, to, to go back uh, on your faith. Now, I, I don't know that we face uh, that, that type particular charge or particular situation. But, but I, I think the, the, the principle applies. You know, if you go into work and you start standing up for Jesus, you get shunned. You know, you, you, you know they'll plan, plan to go out to eat, won't invite you because if you go with them to eat, then they can't order their drinks. You know, those kind of things. And, and, and you, know, you may not be excommunicated from the synagogue, but you'll get excommunicated from society. You know, your own, uh, own family will push you out. You know, there, there'll be things, there'll be events, and they won't invite you because there's going to be activities and they're going to be doing things, and they don't want to hear your testimony. They want to hear you tell them about Jesus. Listen, this is a real issue still today, I think. That, you know, uh, again, it, it's tweaked just a little bit. But Jesus says excommunication, they would uh, you know, uh, put them out uh, of the church. And so this was a, a, a real fear trying to, and they would use that to, again to get people to say, okay, I take it back. I take it back. I'll quit talking about Jesus. You don't need to raise your hand. But have you ever felt pressure to quit talking about Jesus? From your own family? From your co-workers? That's what he's talking about. Excommunication. But look, he goes a step further. He says, the second thing that he says in the rest of that verse, he said, the time is coming, the hour is coming when they'll kill you. And look what he says. They will kill you and they will do it um, thinking uh, that they, they lift up, the, that they're doing good. They will kill you for your faith. Now, I, I know, sitting here in 2020 America, the idea or the threat of being executed for serving Jesus, it's, it's what... It, it, on a scale of 1 to 10, the idea of being executed for serving Jesus, 10, 15 years ago, it was probably a zero. <clears throat> and probably as Americans, I might not even have to go back that far. Just not too many years, I want to put, not too many years ago, the idea of being executed for your faith was a million miles away. You had all kinds of things. There were 10,000 things you were worried about before you were even considering the idea of being executed for serving Jesus. But I'm going to tell you something. In 2020 America, it's not a zero anymore. It may not be a 10, but it's not a zero. If you don't look at the path and the way that Christianity, again, not religion, but Christianity is being treated, being legislated against. Is there a human being in this room that thought six months ago that the government would issue a decree shutting down churches? Did you, had you ever even thought that was a possibility? under the wildest of circumstances. Just a few years ago, the threat of dying for your faith was zero. If it's not at least got a one or two or three now, if it's not creeping up, you had not been paying attention. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not, I'm just telling you, the world is changing. America is changing. The Bible Belt is changing. Some of you in here, you, you, you know, it, it may be far enough down the road that you won't live to see it. 
But I wouldn't guarantee that. Jesus says the threat of persecution for serving Jesus Christ is real. And listen, don't throw rocks at the messenger. If you look in your Bible, if, if, if you got a red letter of addition, them letters is red. That means Jimmy didn't say it, Jesus did. And Jesus says the day is coming when they will execute believers. It's already come before. Don't think it can't happen again. Go back and read your history. It's happening now in some countries. There are plenty of Muslim countries where if you come home and you tell your family that you have accepted Jesus Christ, your own parents will cut your head off. Things are changing, folks. And here's what's scary, is what Jesus says. Jesus doesn't just say that they will execute people, but he says they will do it. Look at that verse. They will do it thinking they're doing what God wants them to. They will execute people for standing up for Jesus and think they're doing and claim they're doing what God wants them to do. I know this is just the bestest pastor appreciation Sunday ever preached. Telling people they're going to die for their faith. Well, in my mind, I'm telling you how much I love you because I'm telling you the truth. If this world stands, if Jesus doesn't come soon, you're going to see it. I've told y'all the story before the night of my ordination when my grandfather stood and I was sitting on the front row. He stood right at the edge speaking directly to me. He says, I believe in your day you will see Christians persecuted for their faith. And I remember thinking, you're crazy. That would have been 1980-something, six, seven, somewhere along in there. Thirty-some years later, my grandpa was a prophet. It's going to get harder and harder and harder to serve Jesus. Not to be religious, but to serve Jesus. To preach Jesus is the only way of salvation. It's going to get harder and harder and harder. Not only that, we see then the motive. Again, he says, this things they'll do to you because they've done it. They don't know the Father. They'll do these things because they don't know the Father or me. I'm not going to spend long there. That verse is self-explanatory. Folks, the world doesn't know Jesus, and they hate those who do. It's that simple. Jesus says, they don't know me, and therefore they will persecute those of you who say you do. But here's the carrot at the end of the road. Look at the final verse. You see the mission. Look what he says in verse 4. But I, but I have said these things to warn you that that hour comes. He says, I want to warn you that that's coming. Don't be shocked. Don't be surprised. I've told you those things that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. You know what Jesus says about persecution? Here's what his message is to us. He says, <clears throat> when I'm informing you, I'm telling you about this persecution. So when it comes, you'll know I told you the truth. When it comes, you will know, you, you will remember, I told you these things. So when persecution comes, you'll go, hey. I remember reading about that in John chapter 16. Jesus told me that persecution was coming. He told me that persecution was coming. He warned me about that. And you know what? He told the truth. 
And so if he told the truth about that, and he saw that, those other verses where he said, I'll send you a comforter, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, I'm a friend that sticketh closer to the brother, I'll go with you through the valley of the shadow of death. If he was right about this, guess what? He might be right about the rest of it. See, Jesus says that instead of being a stumbling block to us, persecution ought to confirm to us that we're serving a risen Savior. He says persecution ought to remind us and tell us that, that we're serving uh, a risen Savior. I, I told you this. Uh, he says, I told you this so you know. He says that it should increase, actually increase our faith. Jesus says, don't let the devil win. He says, don't let persecution be a stumbling block to you. When the world comes against you, when the world hates you for your faith, that should tell you, you know what? Jesus was right, and I'm just going to press on even harder. Yeah, I might not ought to tell this story, but I'm going to. I don't know about y'all, but riding my bumper... does not encourage me to speed up. Amen. Ask that fellow that followed me down Moose Road yesterday. <laughs> By the time we got to those two sharp curves on Moose Road, if you know where it is, I was doing about 10 miles an hour. <laughs> the closer he got, the slower I went. Listen, I was just determined. You know, you ain't gonna push me. I'm, you know, I, I just ain't going to. I mean, listen, and, and, and here's what I'm trying to encourage. Yeah, it might be a poor way of illustrating it. But the heart of the world tries to push you away from Jesus. The heart of the world tries to persecute you and get you to abandon your faith and walk away from serving God. Jesus says that ought to be a reminder to you you're on the right road and nail down and buckle down. I don't know about, I know some of you. And I know you like me about that. The harder you try to push me, the more anchored I get. Say amen, Scoot. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I wasn't saying amen that you agree that I'm that way. I'm saying amen you with me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. The harder you try to push, the more stubborn I'm going to get. Say amen, Faith. I, yeah, I know some of you all on my side. Yeah. Yeah. The harder you push, the more stubborn I get. Jesus is basically, that's, you know, in some ways that might be a bad characteristic. But what Jesus says is the more the world tries to push you away from me, the more you cling. The harder they try to drag you away, the more you hold on, the bolder you get, the stronger you get, the greater your faith ought to get because he says, I told you this was coming. It tells you I was right. It tells you you're on the right path. It tells you you're on the right road. The more they strive to get you away from Jesus, don't let it be a stumbling block. He says, you nail down and buckle down. He said, I said this. He says, I told you this now, not at the, at the beginning because you didn't need to know it then. He says, but I'm telling you now because you need to know it. The hour of persecution is at hand. Listen, I don't know what it's going to look like. You know, there have been a lot of little things that have happened. There have been zoning laws that have been passed that have tried to hinder the church. There have been a lot of little actions over the years, little things that have tried to hinder the church. Little things talking about taking away the church's tax exemption. Um, some courts have um, changed the way pastors um, or tried to change the way pastors pay taxes, um, make, making the tax burden worse um, on pastors. 
Um, you know, there, there, there have been a lot of little things um, over the years. Again, zoning laws in some areas said churches couldn't add, but so much to their building, regardless of how much property they had. There have been little things over the years that have kind of pushed on the church. <coughs> but I do believe, as I look, and I think this election may be the turning point. You, you need to pray real hard. You pray real hard about how you vote and who you vote for and how this turns out. Because I think it might be ugly either way. But I do think we're headed quickly towards more persecution of the church. I'm not saying they're ready to burn us at the stake yet. I'm not saying they're ready to feed us to the lines yet. But I do think we're headed quickly. Quickly. Picking up speed. Towards persecution. Losing your job. Those kind of things. For your faith. I want to ask you to bow your heads this morning. And I know some of you may be saying, Jimmy, you're an alarmist. Jimmy, you're, you're stretching it. Well, if I'm stretching it, Jesus stretched it. Because Jesus said the day will come when they will kill you for your faith. The day will come when they kill you for your faith. I didn't say that. Jesus said that. This morning I want to encourage you, invite you. Come kneel where you are. Whatever, however God leads you this morning, whatever you're comfortable with. There in your homes. Kneel, Lord. Help me to hold tight to you. Help me hold tighter. Help me get closer. Help my faith grow stronger. The more they try to tear me away from you, the more I want to hold on. The more they try to get me to be quiet, the stronger I want to become. The louder I want to sing. God, help me to be bold. Help me to be strong. Help me to be loud. Be a witness for you. If you're here today or online, and you don't know Christ personally, you don't know Him as your Savior. Today is the day. You can know Him personally. I'm not going to stand here and tell you it'll be easy. I'm going to tell you it'll be hard. But I'm going to tell you it'll be the best thing you've ever done. To have your sins washed away, to be forgiven, and to have the promise of eternal life with Jesus Christ. If you don't know him today, would you come? And let me show you from God's word. If you're online, put a comment, send an email. I'll be in touch. God, make me strong in my faith. Don't let anybody or anything push me away. Don't let anything be a stumbling block as I serve you. I don't want to be religious. I want to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you this morning for your word. God, I pray today that you would stir our hearts. God, that believers in this room, God, we'd commit ourselves all over again. We dedicate ourselves, determine ourselves to follow you and let nothing be a stumbling block. God, for the one that doesn't know you, God, I pray that today would be the day of salvation. That today would be the day that their heart would be moved and they would come to know Jesus Christ. And we'll praise you and honor you for all that you do. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. As we stand together.